Okay, hello everyone. So let's start. Uh, it's 10 a.m. and I'm Yakada Bich and this is Edumanga Panul. Uh, I will be talking about uh, starting with, with the history of, of the term Edumanga and about what kind of works have been done before. Um, then I will go into a review of works that were fairly recent and uh, what kind of education you can get out of them. Uh, I will be comparing them on this kind of level of, of what kind of educational merit we can get with, with those works. And I will conclude with general um, discoveries. So let's start with the first idea of why would we use manga for education? Most of the time everybody just uses it for entertainment, right? Uh, there was actually a study, I found out a study from 2000. Um, nine, uh, which goes actually into detail about uh, why would manga as a literary form be good for educating people and this was an overview of, of previous existing studies how um, combining images with text in a proper way uh, makes a form that is actually more memorable and better to explain certain concepts uh, and this was compared, for example, to speech, to text. Uh, apparently, if you were to listen to a lecture, uh, you're going to forget uh, more than if you're going to watch images with text, which is why I'm going to have a lot of images in my presentation. Uh, but also, uh, there was a, a review of manga and looking at existing mangas, especially seinen and shonen, uh, it turns out that to make a quality manga, you need to pack a lot of real facts in it. Especially when you want to base the manga on, on something real, like, say, sports manga. Uh, the mangakas, even if they do not originally intend the position to be educational in any way, really, they still do throw background checks on topics and then put that information to the manga and explain easily with diagrams certain things, uh, which turns out then uh, to be pretty educational if you think about it. So that work, which was originally intended to be just for entertainment, becomes a kind of hybrid of education and entertainment. But this study is for 2009. But the Edu manga concept is even older. So Osamu Tezuka, the god of manga himself, has uh, started with doing works that, that were historically based and literature based. So the first uh, manga of his that I found uh, with uh, the tag historical uh, in uh, catalogues is uh, Mori no Yogenshi from 1948 which is actually a manga about fairy tales and it goes into Russian folklore and so on which isn't exactly historical, but it still goes into the literary kind of, of the uh, let's draw the book, so people who not, do not feel like reading the book actually can read the pictures and be happy with that. A uh, year after that, he actually did a work on Faust, which is already a pretty big work of, of literary fiction. And he has about 30 mangas in total that are tagged historical. One of these is Adult Hitler's Life. So it, it might be that he starts from, from Moru no Ryokenshi, which is pretty much a child's tale, but then he actually gets pretty serious. And then it gets even better, because in 1986, um, noticing that, that comics is actually something particular, um, the Japanese version of, of this kind of very important economics magazine uh, commissioned a book which is the introductory Japanese comics for manga. And this position is pretty much a comic that chapter by chapter explains economical terms and economical phenomena with a comic. Uh, and this is 30 years ago. And in 1987, this was one of the most selling business books. So 
it, it's already been a while, and it, they already noticed that that teaching with manga actually makes results. And this was uh, from this uh, category type of manga, which was called practical manga at the time. And after that, a lot of works were based in this kind of way that they were even explaining some things for, for some agencies and companies in the comic form. And as I said, Osamu Tezuka started uh, doing a lot of things that would be in, in this kind of historical way. And his legacy, the Tezuka Productions, decided to run an educational series uh, with Astro Boy, who is introducing children to different historical figures. That was 21 works that uh, were running from 1987 to 2003. And some of the examples are here, for example, Anne Frank, Albert Einstein, Heller, Adam Keller, uh, and she's, uh, th these are very European characters. The uh, Tezuka Productions uh, series includes Japanese and European alike, and it's, uh, well, trying to explain the kind of historical times they were in and the kind of life they led uh, by having the friendly, uh, childhood memory character uh, walking the reader into it and being this kind of in and you can see even on the on the book educational series edu manga good for the prey they couldn't make it even more clear so just from that introduction the summary goes as follows manga is is a really good almost perfect medium to teach because of the way human brain absorbs information and the way it retains information and the way we just basically work. A lot of information can be presented in manga form that we are nowadays mostly teaching in, in just text form and book form. Um, and this idea isn't new. It's been around for 50 years for this kind of a, around when people were thinking that this might be a good idea and 30 years when they were actually on it and, and making actual manuals. So now, are there on the market, since like 50 to 30 years already, are there books and works that we could use to pretty much replace all the books in a high school curriculum with works that would basically back up or, or replace in every subject and explain all the terms in, in simple images and make everybody remember everything wonderfully? Not yet. So uh, I did a review, and this, this is what, what the uh, main meat of this presentation is about, is what kind of titles there are, how they are dealing with the subjects, and so on. And with this kind of very fast uh, review, the topics most often found in the manga is history. Over half of the mangas I found for this presentation are history-based. Um, it's pretty easy, because in history you can find plot. And then you can use that plot to describe the plot, which is the history, and that's pretty much the point. In all the other, almost, it becomes a kind of side dish to the plot that most mangas are usually concentrating on. Uh, so we can have social studies of, of self-defense, of cooking, some kind of uh, knowledge of how to bring up a child, but. Uh, those mangas are usually just describing people's day-to-day -day life, the so-called slice-of-life genre, with just emphasizing those aspects. They are not exactly saying, we're going to teach you how to make jam today. No, not really. And you can pretty much skip those information if you don't feel like it. You can just concentrate on the plot itself. Similar comes for, for physical education when we have massive amount of sport mangas and exercise related. There isn't that many that, that go and try to teach you how to do those things. It's just explaining them because it's important to the plot. We have also sex education, and I don't mean hentai here. We're gonna have a little bit more of, of sex education that goes into the education part rather into the, than into the sex part. We also have religion. Uh, there are mangas uh, about Buddha, about Jesus, and about Norse religions and so on. Very often they are just like cherry-picked and used uh, into the main plot as this kind of side thing again. 
so it's not the, the main focus. And also hobbies, whatever uh, Kayon or, or any other uh, piece that, that goes into people having hobbies and, and being very passionate about them just describes them. However, there are some topics that in this list you can see already missing. For example, science. Chemistry, physics, biology, math, those things are not that easily explained in the plot. Um, there is a series of manga type books about them, which I'll be talking about much later. Uh, I haven't actually found, for example, as well, a geography theme, the manga. Uh, there is geography in historical mangas to present what part of the globe we are talking about and how does the city look like and how does the area look like and so on. So you will have maps in manga, but you will not really have geological studies and so on or discussion of how the geographical things have changed or how the rivers you know, spread around the continent and so on. And, and this topic I found quite lacking. And then there is also languages which are usually translated just with different font, right? So you can know that this has been spoken in a different language and the other characters aren't supposed to know it, but uh, what, what's there, but you understand them because that's what the plot is about. And I would say that manga would be pretty nice to uh, teach languages. Um, there is a lot of language books that have comics and images and so on to teach. But all in all, language teaching is, is not really a forte in, in the mangas. So let's get to the actual review. And I'm putting a spoiler alert because for some mangas I do need to do some spoilering. And I'm sorry about that. I'll try not to spoil too much. And note uh, that I will be giving you precise information for each manga with the title, authors, and the number of volumes. Uh, but at the end of the slides, I will have this kind of combined slides with all the titles. So if you're interested in all the mangas I've been talking about, there will be a combined slide at the end that you can maybe take a picture of or something like that. Uh, but if you're interested in single ones, you can just take a picture of the slide. Okay. And let's start with some history. And I divided the history into four sections because they are pretty distinct, and they show this kind of tendencies in the manga that is uh, being happening around. So we have these semi-accurate historically mangas that, that are trying to be uh, historically accurate, but then they deviate in some way. And I'm not talking here about time traveling to the certain era and meeting characters and then coming back and saving all the characters that should be historically dead and so on. I didn't go into that far fictionally uh, changed mangas. I've done this kind of where, where there is like some things that you could still believe maybe, but then there is some other stuff that just, you know, uh, if they were used as a historical, uh, um, course book, there might be some problems, people believing bullshit or something. Then we will have some historically accurate mangas because they exist and it's really nice that they do. And then we will have what I like to call the historical societies. So this kind of study where, where the characters uh, that are presented are false. You know that they are fictional. They probably never existed or they, they aren't marked as, as this being made by his on, on real events, but the times where they lived were actual, and we can see from how the manga is made that it actually sticks to those things. So we know what kind of ruler was then at the time, and what kind of <clears throat> clothing people were wearing, what kind of habits, and and this kind of what what people were doing at the time, which is a sort of historical. Uh, work. And then we'll have some Japanese history. I put it separate and I'm going to do a particular slice of cake of, of the Japanese history to present the kind of differences that the mangas like to also do. Of course there is a lot of Japanese history in the manga. Um, I just kind of slide it and went mostly to European history in the first three sections. So let's start. First, we have Hannibal, which is one of the oldest works in this section. 
And Hannibal was the Carthaginian military commander, one of the greatest in history, a man who was feared for his genius and for his ruthlessness when he was alive. And in the manga, in the first chapter, we have the birth of Hannibal. And right after he's born, uh, he doesn't speak much, he doesn't react, doesn't cry. So they think he must be brain dead or something. Let's just bring him to the um, uh, priest and just offer him to our god of thunder, Baal. Uh, when they try to offer him to god of thunder, Baal, uh, the child starts speaking um, like a full grown man uh, without any problem. Uh, I'm guessing this is when it's like less than one year old. And the moment a baby starts claiming it's a child of a pagan god, I stop believing that anything in the manga is accurate. However, the manga does seem to go into life of Hannibal, aside from this kind of weird quirks, like being a god or something. And the manga is still ongoing. Some other um, inconsistencies in the historical uh, thing of, of Hannibal was also that Scipio, who is mentioned even in the title, and is a historical person, is a commander who was uh, fighting against Hannibal in the wars, um, is presented as this kind of light that will defeat the monster that the Hannibal is, um, which is also quite not accurate, considering that Hannibal has lived quite long after those wars and fought in other wars and, and was generally prolific and, and died of old age, I think, something like that. So, um, yeah, the, the story is a little bit over-dramatized. Next, uh, we will have a hermaphro hermaphrodite, Richard III. And Richard III was uh, king of England in 15th century. His reign was very short. Uh, he died in a war. And apparently he was, in general, a, an unpleasant individual who was scamming all the time and being generally unpleasant and, and wishing everybody everything worst. And in the manga, uh, he is presented as um, abomination since birth because he was born neither a man nor a woman. And this in manga shows that he's being rejected by his uh, mother and basically leads a tragic life which leads to his twisted character and so on. Um, the real uh, Richard III was actually not a hermaphrodite. Apparently he even had children. But he was portrayed in Shakespeare's work as an ugly hunchback. And it was generally seen for a quite a long while as if he's some kind of evil troll or something like that. So we can he see here one of the pictures from, from the theatrical um, versions of the play of, of Richard III. What we actually now know from, from archaeological uh, discoveries and some DNA comparisons and so on is that Richard only had scoliosis, which could be hidden by a well-made um, armor and clothing, and aside from that, was actually pretty handsome. So why would the manga make him a hermaphrodite? I have no idea. Um, I guess if, if you just check out Shakespeare and look at how ugly he is and, and think, uh, manga will not sell. Let's just make him something pretty. And, and that's how probably um, Richard became something much else. He's, he's actually very pretty. I do not have the slide uh, here, but uh, for, for a spawn of hell, he's quite handsome. So now we have some uh, much later story. And here we, in Boku no Shopping, we have uh, quite shown an eye action on uh, very historical characters. We have Shopping, we have Licht, uh, then we have some other um, famous composers and pianists, and, um, and for why would he be portrayed as gay? Not sure, because he had about four lovers or, or loves, uh, all women, but one of them, and we have here her picture, decided to change her name to George. Which is, uh, some people say, possibly because she was um, very feministic and she wanted to uh, fight for women's rights. 
or some other people say maybe because if you have a male sounding name you get uh, printed easier. She was a writer. And uh, well, uh, they have a, had a troubled relationship, which maybe what prompted, I mean, if, if you don't read into it, you might think that it was either a transsexual or, or an actual guy or something like that. And, and then you're like, hmm, maybe he was B or something. He had a wife as well, so. So from, from shopping, we go to a little bit more modern times and this, I guess, uh, quite a lot of people here know uh, because the work was actually printed in Finland. It's only one volume, uh, but the wonderful story of uh, Simo Hauha, the white witch, uh, fighting on Finland's part in the winter war against Russians, agrees to the moment when we see a picture of uh, Simo in the manga, which is of a uh, uh, soft-spoken uh, woman in uh, light clothing, um, and then we have this wonderful plot about her fighting against this Russian sniper, the Red Witch, and everything. Uh, so, why Simo, his his picture here from from after the war, uh, was turned into a woman? I have no clue. And well. It, it shows again that if you do not read into the details or check an external uh, book, you might get a bit confused. So the, the problem, what I see here, is that those mangas are con considered historical. Uh, because of if, if you go into catalogs of manga, very often, as long as there is any historical theme, it just gets categorized as historical. Uh, so fiction and, and some kind of crazy historical stuff that comes out in there still gets stuck as historical. And I would say if, if you just go and, and say, guys, this is history, you can just read it as a comic and you're gonna learn things, you're going to get maybe disappointed in the knowledge you're getting. And um, this, is, this is why just going along with a yay manga is in educational, let, let's read all the manga there is that, that seems educational without getting any external check or anything might bring harm. And this is also because if you think about it, textbooks and course books for school are usually uh, checked. So you have some kind of authority that says this makes sense and this says true facts and we can just let it through and if this uh, has some kind of fake stuff or, or just doesn't make sense at all, we can just reject it. And in case of uh, historical mangas, there is no authority whatsoever. And if there was, everybody would just be probably very angry with it. So there is just nothing to, to tell you if, if it's like that or not. But so, so now that we've went through things that are very inaccurate and I would not recommend you to learn from this, I would start now with things that actually make sense and are pretty well done. So let's start with, again, by historical order, the oldest. Uh, that is Genghis Khan's story. And uh, here we have a panel from the manga, which, uh, again, I, I checked the facts briefly, but... Uh, what we can see here uh, is that Genghis Khan was born holding a blood cloth in his hand, which was a legend about him saying that, that this was a sign of the child being an actual great commander. So uh, the manga starts with that, then it goes into his teen years when as Temujin, which was his uh, first name, uh, he was an actual great hunter and uh, horse rider. Here is his family. Uh, there is something that I wonder about because it, it seems like it's some s small family for that kind of tribe, but I couldn't find the details on this one. Uh, so this is only one volume order. And it actually skips a lot. It has back flashes and forward flashes and unless you actually read exactly and track the time, it might confuse you. It doesn't encompass the whole of, of James Hunt's life. It's more like his uh, 
relation with his little brother that is here emphasized. And the whole story of conquering the Asian continent, which he did a pretty good job of. Then, let's move to something uh, a little bit further in time, I believe, which is the Siege of Syracuse. This is actually one of the only titles, or rather a few titles that I found that isn't exactly about a person as much as a historical event. And what is interesting, this is again a one volume work, so very short, only describing the, the most important parts of the siege, is that it details the wonderful machines that Archimedes created. And these machines are detailed actually in the manga more than, than anything else really. So you have uh, nice descriptions of how they work, why they were built, and so on, and how they uh, were used to kill a lot of people uh, during the siege. And when you look at it, it, it looks pretty modern, right? It, it looks advanced. But in actual recourse of these machines that we have, they look pretty impressive as well. The machine, because are not complete from what I know, so it might be that the mangaka was faking some of these at least, but uh, from what I can compare, they look pretty accurate. Yes? Uh, sorry, something happened to your mic. I didn't think it was in the car. Okay. Did I press something? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Um, now better? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, so the so the Heureka uh, stories of, of Archimedes' inventions, I place it in this kind of variable uh, story because in, in the time of, of the Syracuse uh, siege, Archimedes was pretty senile. And they present him as, as a sen senile guy in the, in the manga, so it isn't really about him per se, more about the physics and, and the, all the interesting things that he created. Then uh, we have the life of Eumenes, who was the secretary to Alexander the Great. And Alexander the Great lived a long time ago. This is, again, antiquity. But what is quite uh, important here is that he kept diaries. So the story of his life was pretty well described. And from what I have checked, and I tried to compare, his story follows those stories. So it is nine volumes and ongoing, which makes it a little bit long for a historical uh, piece of work. I mean, that is only as long as, as a person in, in ancient times could live uh, and have adventures. And, and this is one of those few works that actually follow uh, one of, of the historical people, which I will talk about a bit later. Now for a next a story which is again based on uh, diaries is the diaries of the executioner Charles Henry Sanson and and this work is even it, it seems to me even more accurate and faithful to the thing because Charles Henry Sanson also kept diaries and the mangaka in the omake part of the manga volume puts actual analysis and details about the diaries themselves and about this history and how they relate to the manga. And you can see that the background checks done for this manga were pretty good. What does uh, point out is that um, this manga is very dramatic. And some of the reviews even I've seen is the, the general feeling about the manga is that the things, uh, because th this is a man who was an executioner. So there's a lot in his life, like all those decapitations of, of people during the French Revolution and killing kings and queens and so on. This is already quite high profile stuff. So probably he had already very exciting life. Uh, but apparently from reviews it comes out that even uh, daily things were very dramatic in that manga and on that side it's it's a little bit overdone uh, but as we can see it's a complete work of nine volumes so it's something that was basically probably done from the beginning to the end based on those diaries not trying to deviate or making it into a super cool sane and 
manga that runs forever, which in historical genres is a good sign. And the last one is Barefoot Gen, which is also a 10 volume work, uh, which tells the story of Hiroshima after the bombing. And uh, if the information holds true that I found, um, uh, Nakazawa Kenji himself survived the bombing of Hiroshima and lived there. So uh, what we could guess is that the work he's writing here is based on his own experiences. And to, I would say, is pretty damn accurate compared to even previous stuff. And uh, this, this goes very much over all the stuff that was happening there, the social conflicts, the people suffering from the disease. It's pretty brutal manga, um, but it's, it's quite close probably to what we can say a documentary about these uh, events. Now let's move to my next section. It is the portrayal of societies over the ages. As I said, there is a section of mangas that do not really follow a historical character like Charles Henry Sanson or uh, Heumenes or anyone particular. We know that the characters are fictional, but we also know that the clothing they wear was accurate for the era, that the things they did was accurate for the era, and in general, the story is, is quite close to what you would expect. So let's get to the Vikings, uh, who were described in Vinland Saga. And, and here, as I said, the, the sign that the, there might be some inconsistencies historically, it's 17 volumes and ongoing. Uh, so the story probably got pretty popular. I think there is a manga now, uh, anime now even made from this manga. And I would say it, it's pretty good because uh, the details of their, uh, you know, the, the ships, the clothing is pretty accurate for the era. Uh, it shows uh, historical uh, people like the kings at the time, the, the war chiefs. So we do have the names coming up from there. But the story pretty much follows a, a regular boy who probably didn't get recorded if he existed at all. Then we have one of my favorites, Otome, Otoyome Gatari, which is uh, a bright story. So this manga has a theme of, of going around brides who are get to get married in the Turkic society. Uh, the 17th century uh, times uh, of people who live in Asia, uh, the story tries to go into detail about what kind of life they lead, uh, what kind of uh, houses they have, uh, what kind of traditions they have. Uh, and here we have this kind of probably token representative for, for us as the reader, who is a European guy traveling around Asia and recording all those things and writing down very much drawn into all the traditional things that uh, that people were doing in that time and this is well i'm pretty glad that it's eight volumes and still going on uh, but as a historical thing it's well it's very interesting to have just at least a look in into the life of people they had especially when we can have a comparison with a 19th century Victorian England, uh, which was depicted in Emma. This is a closed volume, 10 volumes and, and complete work. Uh, what is very particular about Emma is that we have the clothing, we have the society, and then it takes 10 volumes for a maid to marry a boy from an upstart rich family, which shows all the social dif difficulties and, and all the social a level and, and here are his stuff that was uh, going on at the time and how strict it was. So the story doesn't really portray anybody in particular, but it does go into pretty nice stuff when, when you think about how that times were, were looking for regular folk and how people were doing. Now let's uh, go to the Japanese history and I actually decided to, to 
keep this only to Shinsengumi. And Shinsengumi, if you do not know, is this group of uh, warriors who was formed during the Bakufu period of, of Japanese history. And that was when uh, the shogunate was trying to control the Japan. And, and, and the uh, group of Shinsengumi was this kind of beginning of some kind of police group who was faithful to uh, uh, Bakufu and also did this kind of um, rooting out opposition, but also this kind of, you know, patrolling the streets and checking out. They were very much involved, but uh, if we go and call them police, it's, it's a little bit far-fetched, especially since they were quite brutal. There was a lot of murdering and so on. Uh, and if you look at uh, works that are in any way related to Shinsengumi, there are thousands, I think. It's, there's so many manga titles that at least even mention them, if not go into the uh, Otome game style, uh, putting a girl into the group and then suddenly she can just go ahead. There, there is a game on that, that you can just pick which commander you want to date. Uh, forgetting how bloody and murderous they all are uh, and making it a wonderful story and which is why I'm starting with with the romantic approach uh, which is Kaze Hikaru and again um, historical manga very historical 37 volumes ongoing uh, so we have this girl who uh, because of a uh, dramatic situation, her parents died, she wants to revenge them. She joins Shinsengo in pretending she's a guy, and then Okita Soji, this nice guy there, discovers she's a woman. And then hides it for her and helps her move around, and then they have a romantic situation going on for 37 volumes. Um, then, it's actually pretty famous if you start Googling, you can see a lot of cosplayers and whatnot, so it's pretty popular. Then uh, we see uh, a more adventure approach. So this is a proper shonen. So here we have a young guy whose uh, parents were killed. He wants to avenge them and he joins the Shinsengumi. <laughs> and um, here we have, just for, for short comparison, this is Okita Soji. Okita? Okita. So uh, pretty face. Um, here, the manga is a little bit more flamboyant. There is, there is more killing. Uh, this one doesn't spare the blood, really. Uh, but it's, it's a six-volume work, but there is actually a follow-up, so there is more than this six, if you really want to get into what Chrono Nanase was doing. And here, we have the story mostly revolving around this, this small guy. He's, he's pretty short, so we can call him a shrimp. Um, he was, uh, he, he's basically trying all the time to join and, and the, all the things like, like uh, taking care of all those uh, opposition people and so on are this kind of a background story for this guy trying to prove himself and be one of the guys of the Shinsengumi. Now we go for a little bit more realistic approach. So we have uh, Getsu Seiki, Sayonara Shinsengumi, and there is one more work that is a little bit more accurate, which is about Hijikata Toshizo, uh, mostly, which is the demon commander of Shinsengumi. But it's a one-volume work. And it's, it was a little bit hard to find, but this one is, is ten volumes, so it does describe things at a more leisure pace, because the Hijikata Toshizo one is jumping so much and running to his death, to have his life with his death in the last chapter, that it, it's a little bit more dramatic on that. Uh, in this one, we can see that the posture of the characters is a little bit more unified. Uh, the difference in height are not like, you know, 20 centimeters per each person to make one uh, some kind of tree and, and one just a mushroom. But in this one, we have a little bit more unified. We can see the clothing is also like very much for the era and they are going around and patrolling. This manga actually um, starts when uh, Shinsengumi was a different group. So they had a, a period when they were called differently and they were just starting and then they got renamed to Shinsengumi. So this manga even covers that period. 
So, yeah, there is, there is three ways, at least, to approach the topic of Shinsengumi and describe them as valiant warriors, wonderful lovers, and um, bloodthirsty murders. And there is also one manga, which is the Otome one, which has zombies versus Shinsengumi. Uh, also very interesting uh, approach to the topic. So, to conclude uh, the historical section, there are many historical themed mangas, many, many, many. I've done right now something like over 20 slides just doing the historical section. So learning history from manga, there is a lot of material. The m problems, however, are that it is very often overdone. We have Charles Henry Sanson, historically based manga, based on the diaries of the man himself. And it's, you know, the act of smearing butter on the bread is a dramatic thing. So the dinner of Henry Charles Sanson with his family is uh, throwing plates and crying and so on. So it's very intense. Uh, and especially when you go over dramatic, historical accuracy might not always be a given. Like when you want to express really that the character is the demon incarnate or a monster, and you want to show it by saying that as a baby he could speak, uh, like a grown-up man. Um, also, if, if you go in, into describing the mangas, if, if you take a topic that's been already done in any way, you will want some fresh approach or some kind of materials nobody has reached into. So either you have that one manga that does this one character, or you have Shin Sengum, which was redone every time, and every time they try to make something new, So at least it sells. Um, so that um, angling of the topic might become a little bit of, of a change. Now, there are titles that do not want to follow the historical people themselves. Maybe because it will be difficult for the reader to personify, like feel connected to that character because these are the people that usually you read around in books that they were so wonderful and so, you know, different. That it is easier to create a fictional char character, some kind of shrimp that just wants to avenge his parents. He has desires that we basically, you know, know about and they are easy to kind of sympathize with. Uh, and and it's, it's an approach to just take it instead of uh, trying to maybe guess and be wrong about a historical figure that's famous, of whom we do not have full records of. And that way, the fiction, fictional element comes into the manga and stays there because we keep following that one character the whole time. And uh, this, is, this is one of the reasons that it's difficult to sometimes say if, if the manga really is historical, if they actually insert people that affect the, the plot. And now lastly, we have the supernatural elements in the plot. We just somehow sneak in in some titles. And well, it could be a supernatural element of, of somebody seeing things. We can always say that, oh, he might have been, you know, a little bit in the head. That's why he sees uh, a witch flying around and giving him advice or something like that. But when it is something like talking babies, then I'm out. I'm sorry, this, this is not exactly historical. Now, I told you that there is some geography in, in mangas and especially in hi historical fiction. So I brought out some nice maps. Uh, and this is map from Heureka. So as I said, this is the siege of Syracuse. So here we have the Syracuse as the city. And there is a nice map explanation about why Syracuse is difficult def to defend and why they had to dis do some kind of particular type of fortifications to do those. Uh, and and this, is, this is writing about an explanation of why they're doing some particular military strategy over the other. Very nice detail. Then we have in Vinland Saga a nice map showing how the Vikings were moving around, uh, where we can see that they were traveling over land to visit some parts and attacking middle of the 
a country which they could kind of reach by sea, I guess. But as you could see from the screenshot, they really like to carry their boats around. So I guess this might be the explanation. So what benefits educationally we can get from historical mangas? It's actually a very mixed bag because it depends on how well the manga is made and how accurate it's made. So uh, we can't actually rely on them so much. Uh, there isn't really any authority that tells which manga is accurate and which one you can actually read and believe what it says. It seems like in most of those you have to check your facts, at least Wikipedia. Uh, so this, this might basically, it's like, I do not want to discourage you from reading the historical mangas, but it seems like you just have to check your facts sometimes, otherwise it just becomes difficult and you might not know what you should remember or not what you can use. Now, what, what there is a serious problem with forgetting about all the fictional parts and all the accuracy things is that if you want to be concise in a manga, it doesn't feel good to read it because the plot skips are so big. You just run around for the whole thing. If the character changes too much, if their life just runs through, or you have changes of characters all the time, or you have the fictional immortal character, you cannot really do the plot properly uh, because that's when uh, the, the concept of, of time just, just falls apart for us. And then we get things like, uh, what? Eight volumes for uh, 19th century Turkic people. Uh, then we have 10 volumes for 19th century England, uh, Victorian England. Then we have 37 volumes of something else. Um, what was it? Eight volumes of Charles Henry Sanson. Um, one at least of Heureka, that was really nice. Then we have 10 of history of, of, of Alexander the Great's secretary. This is actually a lot of material if you think about it. I mean, you, if you want to go for the whole history class, you could actually get for almost review of, of a full uh, history spectrum, but you will have hundreds of volumes to read. And you probably want to read more than one volume per title to actually get a feel of what that time felt like, especially if they want to like describe uh, the, the wars that, uh, and the battles that you usually read in, in course books, but in a really big detail. So a lot of that historical stuff, of course, is a plot and it makes the reading nicer, but then the amount of stuff is just going to be big. So what, what I would at this point recommend is, is making it a supplementary lecture of, of examples of making a short focus on, on certain periods of time, but not really going as far as trying to teach people about all the people historically alive, because then it's just not going to cut it with the amount of material. Now, um, I would like to put a disclaimer that I am not uh, a trained historian, and I did not study history enough to actually tell you that uh, this stuff is 100% accurate or not because I will try to attempt to give you some kind of uh, slide now trying to categorize the, the merit with, with a big comparison between them. Uh, but I just want to put there that this is because most of the manga catalogs online that you find will not tell you how accurate the stuff is. It will just slap historical all over it. Uh, and I just wanted to get at least to some level to, to make it easier. So here it goes. Uh, on the far right side, we have lives of fictional people grounded in historical times and the actual events uh, with, with all the kings and so on that has li have lived at that time mentioned as a one-liner. But still a really good lecture to, to even get a feeling of these kind of times. And here we have the 17th century and we have Heureka for... Uh, the, the battle and, and the society of Syracuse. We have Otoyome Gatari for the wonderful Turkic people and the Vinland saga for all the warriors. Um, then I have uh, the historical persona but fictional elements. So we have uh, historical people being followed by fictional people from, from whose eyes we can have a look at it. So then we have Hannibal 
well, this is this is kind of like Hannibal is here half his, half fictional if you think ab uh, about babies talking. Then we have um, semi-accurate semi uh, hermaphrodite Richard III, and we have the gay Chopin, and then we have the wonderful Simo Hauha as as a white witch. Now. Between those, I see this kind of crossing of, of Kaze Hikaru, which starts with a background of historical people with a fictional persona, but then it has some kind of fictional elements and historical thing. So these two, I just couldn't decide which section they belong in more, because the, the plot is heavily on the fictional person, but it also has a lot of historical personas that they are in there. Then we have the, the quite accurate, which we have the Genghis Khan story, which is one volume, so very short, not much place to be mistaken about things and uh, making up. Then we have the Gensu Seiki's uh, Shinsengumi, which is the 10 volume version that looked pretty accurate to me, can't say 100% sure, never studied properly Japanese history. Then we have the Faithful to Records, which I can say, I found information that these are actually Faithful Records, and these are actually only three out of the whole bunch. That's, you know, almost a lot. But, but even those, um, 10 volumes, 8 volumes, um, still ongoing, 10 volumes, almost 30 volumes maybe? for the accurate stuff, uh, 20 minutes per volume for reading if you're really, really a fast reader. Um, that would take you some weeks. Great. So yeah, that's why I'm not sure if I should recommend that historical fiction for, for actual consumption. But I was really talking a lot of history. Let's see some other school subjects. And um, this will be very mixed. I know it it looks very weird, but I tried to take mangas that actually do some education here. So we will start with agriculture and food production. Not exactly a subject you get in school, but it has some biology mixed in and chemistry. Then we will have some cooking, which is, I would say is a social science, practical science, also should be taught in school. Um, then some exercise, uh, actual exercise lessons, not uh, sport, hobby, manga and some medicine. Uh, so we start with Moyashimon, which is also very famous because it became an anime and it was really big blast. The pop popularity of that manga actually led to an increase enrollment in agriculture and agriculture related studies. So this is, this is pretty big. And this is according to that study from 2009 who was actually analyzing Moyashimon pretty in detail about how educational it is. But what is the, the particular thing about Moyashimon is this is a box of miso paste and our main character can see the bacteria and miso paste and starter yeast as small creatures that are talking how we're going to ferment this. Um, and the this is the fictional part of, of the wonderful manga, is that the character can interact with those bacteria, can catch them in two fingers, and so on. Uh, but aside from that, uh, if you can suspend your belief for a moment and understand that this is for fictional purposes, it goes through uh, the whole idea that the human life and the whole planet is highly dependent on those bacteria and you do not have a biosphere without them. So it uh, starts with stuff like fermenting food but tries to go into things as far as the, the entirety of, of terraforming and existence of planets and, and vegetation. Then we have some, some actual agriculture studies in Silver Spoon. Um, Arikawa Hiromu started famous with Full Metal Alchemist, uh, not actually an educational position, and then moved on to uh, study ac about actual agriculture studies. So we have this shrimp here who decided to do agriculture studies because he didn't get into the university of his choice, um, and then learns about all these interesting things he never knew about. For example, where do eggs come from? And they come from the anus of the chickens. Um, he has a bit of a dramatic thing and for a moment cannot eat eggs, poor thing. 
um, afterwards he breaks that and, and manages to eat properly again. Uh, but this manga, pretty much every chapter or every two chapters comes out with some kind of facts or, or some kind of things about biology and agriculture, food production, food making and so on, which is pretty in informational if you ask me. So I would uh, say that it's, it's pretty nice on that. Then we have cooking in manga and Kino Nani Tabeta is actually a manga about a gay couple. Uh, with this one thing that this one guy out of the couple cooks every chapter and there is every chapter a description of what he was cooking. So the, the focus of their life seems to be very intensely on cooking good things and describing how to cook them because here we have a wonderful um, instructions how to make strawberry jam starting with how to prepare the strawberries, how to cook them. He's pretty much in these bubbles, describing in his brain every step of cooking. Uh, the manga is, this is actually one of the most complete recipes I found because a lot of recipes here are done in parallel. So he's cooking two things at the same time and describing in his he uh, uh, head what he's doing at the same time for two things or, or thinking like, okay, the cabbage is old, we could mix it with this and this and then you have the picture of the ready dish. So it's not exactly 100% most organized uh, way of, of dealing with things, but if you do not mind gay manga, this is pretty decent gay and cooking manga. Uh, so yeah. Then we have that kare manga, which is pretty much that kare manga, because if you mention there is a kare manga, people will say, ah, this is the addicted to kare, right? This manga has a plot, it does, which is about running a curry restaurant. And every chapter, pretty much, you will have a curry being made. And this is a recipe for a curry. So pretty much, while they have a picture of that curry that's ready and they talk about how it tastes and so on, the author puts this wonderful block of how to prepare it with instructions and images. I love this kind of cooking books. If somebody just took a court, uh, cooking book that just took all of those and uh, from, from each chapter and just put one per page and printed that out, that would be great. But this manga has also plots in it with pictures and everything. So uh, it, it also has all the explanations for at some point why would you use this and this ingredient which has a plot explanation and so on. So yeah. And, and it's only 49 volumes, and it's complete, right? No more volumes coming. Great. And then we have that bread manga, which, if, again, if you mention there is a bread manga, and there is these people cooking it and so on, it's like, yeah, that's, that's Yakitate Japan, right? Um, so Yakitate Japan got pretty famous with the manga and afterwards the anime, uh, because uh, they are going very often to competition, there are people eating the bread uh, at the competition and they have theatrical reactions to the taste of the bread and just basically uh, have, have some kind of theater in their heads uh, describing the flavor being outworldly. Now, what it does in the manga uh, for educational value is that it describes how some of the breads are growing uh, what kind of yeasts do what, uh, why would you do these things and the others. What it does not do is straight recipes. So it describes how the things could be done, but they do not go as far as, as uh, addicted to curry does by showing the exact recipe straight on one page with all the instructions there, which is a pity, but uh, well. Um, Yakitate Japan is again 26 volumes and uh, it's, it's pretty much plot and, and all the reactions we can get from eating bread. And then we have some exercise. Uh, I really like this manga. This is short, it's four volumes, and in here the plot isn't really the driv driving motivator. The plot is actually that uh, this girl is a tra training to be physiotherapist, this girl is working in an office, and it's usually that 
she comes back from work and this girl just forces her to do exercise. And, and this is not actually, uh, they, they're just living together, they're not in a relationship or anything. And the manga pretty much revolves around the exercise. I actually read into it a while and then I was like, was, is there any other plot going to me? And then there was some plot and I was like, oh, okay. So it's, it's almost like hentai in the way, uh, except it's, it's not sex, it's a you know, stretching exercise. I do recommend because I was checking out some of these and they're pretty good. So if, if you have stiff shoulders or, or problem in the muscles uh, or you just need some warm up, pretty decent instructions. And then I said there would be some medical stuff. And then we have very specialized medical thing. This is Team uh, Medical Dragon, which is about heart surgery and working in hospitals in Japan. And um, this is actually a diagram of, of what the issue in the heart is and how it's going to be fixed. So they operate and instruct and so on. What is particular about this manga is what you can learn more from it is how feudal the system in the hospitals is, actually. Because most of the manga uh, revolves around the uh, doctors who are caring about the patients, trying to fight the doctors who care about their position in the hospital versus caring about the patients. And uh, the actual medical stuff is done in a little bit more sidelines. So I'm kind of wondering about putting this one as a social studies thing rather than as an actual medical studies thing. But, uh, well, in, and it's only 25 volumes, complete work, right? If, if you want to do heart surgery, maybe you can just, you know, have a look. Maybe you'll learn something from it. I'm afraid you will not get a certified medical degree <laughs> just from reading the 25 volumes. And, and the manga is dramatic in, in some ways as well. Af oh, after all, it's heart surgery, right? People die if you do not save them. That's quite dramatic. Now, uh, I said at the very beginning we would have some sex education with more education in it than sex. So let's get to the part that is very important in the sex education, and that is the pregnancy and birth. And Let's, let's distance ourselves, okay, let's, let's go back maybe a slide and, and think about uh, pregnancy in manga. So when you have this regular manga, some, some shoujo or some seinen or something, if there is a pregnant woman in the manga, there is this high probability that she will give birth without any trained uh, medical staff around in some kind of back room, in, in some kind of middle in the mountains, in some inn or something, and the main characters of the manga will have to assist in the delivery, and everything will be fine, and everybody will be like, super stressed before that, but afterwards it just went well, the mother and the child are safe, nothing bad happened, and, and this doesn't happen that often, which is why Konodori goes through what kind of things can go wrong when you have a pregnancy and birth. And the chapters are themed. So you will have one doctor pretty much for all of those, but you will have changing people, of course. Yeah, I mean, you can't have the same couple having different births all the time. Um, so you will have a case of teen pregnancy, a case of abortion, a case of uh, birth defects, um, all the kind of problems, a case of why shouldn't you smoke during pregnancy. The manga is 12 volumes and ongoing, but at least the beginning volumes I find quite informative. Uh, checking out uh, on the author, it seems that the author is actually consulting a doctor about it and trying to get from the doctor an actual information, how that stuff would look like, what are the problems and what should you do and not do uh, in, in some cases. So the accuracy here is pretty nice, pretty high. Uh, the topic is very narrow, but it is this kind of thing that you, if you ever want to procreate, no matter the gender, you probably want to learn about this stuff. So very nice on, on the sex education. Uh, now the part you were probably waiting for. Uh, so this is the, the part where the sex happens. 
And this is Futari Echi. I hear that there was a panel or is a panel at the convention about this manga alone. I mean, it's 64 volumes and ongoing. It deserves a panel of its own. Uh, but uh, this manga is, is a very particular thing uh, because it's a plot-driven thing about a young couple just getting married and having their first intercourse with together and then their family and friends and so on having their sex lives. And what's, what's very particular that got probably this, this manga very popular is the diagrams. All the diagrams describing the percentages of people having sex in different times of the week, uh, the types of penises and vaginas. I mean, you can have very detailed penetration with, with a wonderful diagram, looks straight like from, from some kind of manual or something. Uh, and, and then you have a description of whatever. What, what it seems to me, though, is that uh, the diagrams are this kind of wonderful glitter uh, on top of the plot cake in, in most of it. And it's a little bit chaotic because the diagrams come uh, with the plot very much. So if somebody mentions in the plot something and there might be a relevant diagram to that thing, then the diagram is right below. Uh, but it's not really organized as unless you actually take the organization in the way that, that you get married when you're a virgin as well and you're just following how that stuff goes here, you might learn something. But 64 volume is a little bit... So then let's, let's have something more with... Uh, this I decided to include because of all the rise of popularity of, of Fifty Shades of Grey and then people arguing, oh, Fifty Shades is so horrible, watch The Secretary, it's the older one, it's much better. And I would just say both of them are crap. Uh, and if you want uh, some kind of more accurate view of BDSM and uh, this kind of relationships, then you have Nana Tokaoru uh, by Amazune Ryuta. If you look at other words, uh, works of Amazon Sensei, you will see that it's mostly hentai. Um, amazingly, Nana Tokaru doesn't really contain sexual intercourse. So it's BDSM for the sake of BDSM. Very interesting in that way. Uh, very well drawn. Uh, then uh, you, you have also some explanations about how to use certain things, like for example, a ball gag. And then you have some imagination filled stories and so on. Uh, but this sticks to very this kind of uh, core thing of the whole idea of having a relationship between a couple of, of equals, even though it's supposedly one person is, is being bet up around and the other person is doing the beating. But in, in that way, it's, it's quite interesting. Okay, so. We went through agriculture, cooking, exercise, surgery, sex. Um, I'm not saying there isn't more. There is more. There is, of course, hobbies. There is board games. Uh, you can see there is ballet. There is sports. There is a lot of stuff. Of course, most of those are basically about people passionate about these things, and the focus is on the plot, on the person passionate about it. Now, what about the science? So, I mentioned before it's difficult to find it. There is, of course, some science always somewhere. So, we have biology and physics and chemistry mostly in, phys in, in detective stories where uh, the, the closed room mystery gets solved by some kind of neat trick. For example, here from Kindaichi, we have the story of how a perpetrator pretended to carry skis and murder the uh, victim with, with a big blunt object. It was actually frozen towels bundled into a shape that looks like skis. Ingenious, right? And then we have this very simple thing. If, if you wet towels and put them outside in freezing temperatures, they're just going to freeze in a shape, right? That's physics. So yeah, it's, it's not exactly said that way. But you have a lot of these kind of mangas that just basically go into details explaining how that trick worked and it's very chemistry based or something. Now, while all those mangas that I have mentioned uh, have some educational value, the main problem that you see is that the chapters are not organized in a way 
uh, that a course book would be. They do not really exactly go from the simplest thing to the from the basis to, to advanced things. It more like explains things as they come by in the plot. So you cannot say you learned all of it, and you cannot say how much you've learned versus how much you have to learn still because the material isn't explicitly displayed and described. It's kind of hidden from you. So uh, you can try to learn from those, but uh, with that, you are kind of limited to what kind of stuff you will learn, and it might be that you will have to supplement yourself with some other knowledge. Now, also the problem is, is probably the amount of volumes, uh, 64, 26, there is quite a lot, and I'm not sure how many of those are plot-driven and how many are content-driven, so you can't really say how many actually put all that knowledge in there versus just running as long as it sells. Now, there is actually a series of uh, books that are doing education with manga in organized manner according to the material and not according to the plot. So I did say that 30 years ago there was a book on economics like that. But for what I hear, it was pretty dry and, and very much or organized only around explaining the uh, phenomena and, and terms. But the manga guide to series, as you can see a few of the covers, is taking on pretty much the kind of stuff that you don't really see in mangas often, like physics, like uh, astronomy, like electricity, uh, relativity, statistics. And these things are in Amazon to buy in English, made by Japanese people, translated to English, sold around. And while it looks interesting and Im impressive, you would be wondering what is it going to be like? Uh, these are actually going into this kind of topics, trying to actually describe them and, and explain them, while at the same time running some kind of plot. So we have, for example, in the physics series, a girl wondering why she's not good at tennis and why isn't, is her racket bouncing back when she hits a ball? And then she has an explanation of the physics kind. And then to improve her tennis skills, she actually grabs a nerd and tries to get him to teach her physics and, and movement physics of, of why the things, you know, the, the laws of physics and so on, just so she gets better at tennis. That's devotion, right? And, and of course, we have pretty much fictional characters. I checked some of the mangas and and the plot seems to be quite consistent, uh, which is uh, one of the characters failed course in school and needs to take summer classes. Uh, this gets more uh, ingenious when we have an actual alien failing classes on their home planet and coming to Earth to have the supplementary lessons. Uh, very interesting, right? Um, and then being explained how everything works on Earth because it's so much different than on your planet uh, with all the details and everything. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, the economics is explained by a girl who actually got hots for some guy who's into economics and decides to learn uh, maths and economics so she can just hit on some guy. Very relatable, right? You, you would always try to learn material if you just want to start going out of somebody. But now, it, it all looks fine and dandy, you can buy them on Amazon, but are they actually really used? And I did find an article that there are actually even teachers that, that use it as a supplementary reading. So the reviews that I found about it uh, are that while it's not going really in depth about some things and it's not describing some super advanced things, it's really good for the basics and introduction. So there is an actual university professor who is supplementing the uh, course with, with a manga guide to databases, I think, or, or to statistics or something like that. A pretty neat thing, if you think about it. So the material is, is presented in this kind of easy-to-understand manner. It's 
presented in the material oriented way and it's organized with, with this kind of you know from time to time you have a solid a page of text with some stuff and from time to time you have bubbles and then you have adventures and so on so now again uh, with with this disclaimer that i'm not a trained professional in education i'm going to show you this kind of uh, nice plot of, of study material content versus the quality of, of, the, of the stuff. So, so here we have this, uh, a little bit of studying and majority of the plot and adventures of the characters where we have Futari Echi, some, some gay cooking, uh, some BDSM, uh, then some heart surgery, uh, then there is uh, that bread manga, uh, then there is some curry where because of the wonderful recipes, I just put it at 40%. Uh, and, and Silver Spoon and Moyashimon, who are pretty decent for agriculture uh, education. Then we have a uh, Konodorian stretch where, where plot itself doesn't matter as much as the medical cases and explanations for them, which are pretty important. And then at highly study oriented, you have the manga guide to series. So, conclusions for the whole thing. Manga is wonderful medium, great stuff, and you can use it to educate people about various materials. And there are titles that can be used to teach already. But there is a lot of material that is either crappy or it has fiction mixed in it, or you would need an actual trained professional to just review all of those and just say yes, no, yes, no on the titles. And uh, these kind of things are why the hybrid uh, manga manual, manuals and, and textbooks are being created that are actually made by a team of people who are trying to make sure that the content is educational and it's not doing anything fake in it. So that kind of stuff is out there and can be already used and is being used. Now there is uh, the question slide. Is there anybody who has any questions? You can also ask me afterwards. I'm very open to questions if you know. Okay, so the last two slides, if you want to take pictures with my comments on, on what to read and what not to touch, uh, here is the history manga. And right after that will be the, the other study materials. Mind you, there, there is no volume number here, so you will have to just check what stuff is actually worth your time in the volume versus learning uh, capacity. And then we have the next slide, and this is our plot for study materials of, of all the other subjects. Everybody took a picture? Moment. Okay. And that will be the end. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this.